Angeles City Honors College Prep. Now, six foot, 218 pounder. He'll be a freshman. There's Hudson Cedarland. He's from Gig Harbor. And there are 10 new Cougs here, and five of them are Washingtonians, which is really exciting. So half this part of the class is from Washington. Hudson Cedarland is from Gig Harbor. A 6'4", 220-pound linebacker is what he's going to come in as, slotted as a linebacker. Andre Dollar is a 6'6", tight end, a 230-pound freshman. Fun recruiting story with Andre Dollar from Mustang, Oklahoma. He was a, a late flip and is a, a Coug here coming from the state of Oklahoma. Bryce Grays is a 6'1", 200-pound safety from Richmond, Texas. Played as high school ball at Fort Bend Christian Academy. Sam Lockett, now Sam Lockett the third. he played his high school ball with Armani Marsh. He crossed over at, at G-Prep in Spokane. So Spokane kid, went JUCO, City College of San Francisco. So many great Cougs lately have come from City College, and he's a 6'2", 205-pound redshirt junior. So Spokane kid who's coming back home, and he'll be here. And again, he played with Armani Marsh. Javen Robinson, is a 5'11", 175-pound freshman from Apopka, Florida. And then Juvenjali Slenbaker is a six foot 220 220-pound running back, in-state kid from Bellingham. Had a couple of high school kids from Squal- Squalicum, and the other one is Leighton Smithson. So teammates there from Squalicum. Uh, Leighton Smithson is a 6'1", 180-pound freshman from Bellingham as well. They both played at Squalicum High. 6'1", 180-pounder. Jacobus Seth is a 6'4", 280 80 pound freshman O lineman. They've got him slotted at O line. Another in state guy, Lakewood, Washington. And then Eric Wilder is the 10th, another offensive lineman, a 6'5, 280 pound freshman from Syracuse, Utah. So five kids in state. Super excited about that. You've got a, a California linebacker, Tariq Alukta. Tariq Alukta, I beg your pardon. And then Andre Dollar, the tight end. It's fun to talk about tight ends, right? We'll get into that. And, and we have a, a new offensive coordinator in Eric Morris and what that means for some new positions and kind of uh, a multiple offensive set. So let's get right to it. Let's do this. We'll take a break. We'll talk to the head man himself. Jake Dickert is going to join us here in the Steve Gleason recruit suite right after this break as we've got 10 new kooks that we need to announce here on, on signing day. National letters of intent have come in already early this morning. We're live here from the Cougar football complex and 10 new kooks to welcome in. You, you heard the announcement. Jesson Brink will be with them in El Paso for the, for the Sun Bowl and uh, can't wait to talk to them as well about this new class. So we'll take a break. We'll come back. We're live here on the Palouse from the recruit suite, and we'll get the head coach on next, Jake Dickert. All clear. All right. Boom. Nothing works up an appetite like cheering for your Cougs on game day. So why not cheer them on at Northern Quest with an impressive roster of restaurants and lounges? Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. Cougar football. Rolling right with the ball, going to throw the long ball down the middle, man. Over. Watch the end zone, leaping grab, touchdown, and the Palouse is going to pop. Cougar football from Learfield. All right, so let's talk some snack. There's a new satisfying stop on the road, a destination that'll make sure you never run on empty. And no, we're not just talking about your car. We're talking about Nom Nom. That's right, Nom Nom. It's the quick stop where you'll always leave with your belly happy, your thirst quenched, and your tank full. A snack-obsessed oasis that believes you should look forward to your next fill-up. Nom Nom. Life in the snack lane. 
It's a new season. Get ready for more men's and women's college sports excellence. Trophies will be awarded in June to schools who take the top spot in the 2021-22 Learfield Directors Cup. The premier award recognizes one winning institution in all competitive divisions. Follow your favorite team's progress as seasonal standings are announced at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at directorscup.org. The crowning achievement in college athletics. Join the hunt. Ravel Harris, wide receiver from Tampa, 5'9", 180. Fires, end zone, left side of the field, touchdown, Ravel Harris, a 28-yarder. Ravel, where we're at, we feel like he can come in on the inside, and it, we, we were, I mean, absolutely excited. The Cougars Signing Day Special, presented by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. All right, we're here live in the Cougar Football Complex with the head man himself, Jake Dickert, has taken the time out of a very busy day yes. to throw the headset on. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate the access and the insight here. Ten new Cougs. How do you feel? Oh, it's a great day. And it just, uh, you know, just a lot of hard work, you know, really goes into this day. And, and not just for us, but for these players. And, and everyone that I talked to this morning, it was just like, you know, remember a dream that's realized today. And, you know, the best part about, you know, this group of guys is, you know, they've been with us really through this whole thing. And we're just excited for what they can do for us now and in the future. So got a lot of early enrollees that are going to get their feet wet right away. Yeah, I want to make sure. To, I want to go through a couple things here. Let's Absolutely. Lay, I've got you for two segments. So I want to okay. get, okay, let's let's really get, to get into the teeth of it. We've got yep. ten new guys. I don't want to go through those that you met and that you know in the process. Yep. But really big picture, there was a lot that went on this year. Yep. There's – uh, name, image, and likeness. There is now this early signing period, and then a later signing period, which is now f- we're a few years into that. Yep. What's the process like now? You, 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 what did you have to do? Also, as the official head coach, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. What Thank was, you. What, what's this been like in terms of getting these ten guys and and you know finding new kooks? Well, I think the biggest thing in. And initially in the middle of the season when things change over, it was just really leveling with these guys. Say, hey, stay stay with us, stay committed, let's stay together. And then obviously when I got the opportunity to be the head coach here at Washington State, it was just even building those relationships even more and taking two weeks just to try to get to know even more of the families because I knew a lot of the defensive guys and their families, but it was just a matter of putting those things all together. And there, there's a magic and a matrix to it. But the biggest thing is we still want to be a developmental program, you know, so we can develop these guys and it starts right in our home state of Washington, right? So to have five guys that are connected to our home state and a variety of different ways from, from really all parts of our state is exciting for us. It's interesting to, to hear how you specifically highlight how you want to be a developmental program, how much freshman recruits mean to you in the era of the portal. How does that play into things? Well, I think it's, it's all about a, a magic and a matrix of what your roster needs. And our roster needs to be reestablished and reaffirmed, you know, because – you know, we know we lost a lot of good players uh, out of that last year's senior class and just bring in guys that are the right fits, you know, because there's great players all across this country, but we're all about at Washington State finding the 25 right guys. And we still got work to do, and today is a start, and there'll be more coming along the way as we go through Christmas break. Let's start with the, a position that I, I've yet to talk about. It, it, since it's being here, a little, little bit different. Andre Dollar's a tight end. Yes, Coach Walden's very proud of me today. Yeah, right, yes, that's he's right. very proud of me today. <laughs> that's right. 6'6", 230 pounder, big recruit. He, he, uh, six, I think the sixth ranked tight end in America. Yes. Um, Mustang, Oklahoma. I believe he was an Oregon Duck. Fli- yes. Flipped here to be on the Palouse. What's his story? Yeah, it's amazing. We don't even worry about the flip. It's just Andre finding the right home. Uh, it was amazing when you get a kid on campus. And he just looks around and he goes, this is me. This is us. This is our family. This is the way I was raised. And, you know, he, he's a man of great faith and he's just a man of great character. There's no doubt in my mind, Andre Dollar will be a, a probably three-time team captain here. Like, that's just his personality and his dad's a ball coach. Uh, they started in Naples, Florida. They moved to Mustang, Oklahoma. And it's just been an amazing, really, process in the last couple of weeks of getting to know Andre and his family, which has been unbelievable and but it just shows to find the right fit for a player. And that's why what makes us unique makes us special. And 
and Andre found that right fit for him, and we're so happy to him to be the first tight end in 11 years. Right. It's been a while, yes. and there have been some great Coug tight ends yes. who, who, have, who have come through. And when I hear tight end, when fans hear tight end, and also think about Eric Morris, and if you go look at dig into some yep. incarnate word yep. numbers and try to figure it out, are we thinking pass catching? Is it blocking? Is it all the above? It's a hybrid. You know, that's why you use the term H-back, you know, but it's a guy that's athletic enough to be flexed out and, you know, maybe get on a slot guy or get him that number one receiver get him on a small corner yet he can motion out kick out lead up on the blocks you know hit a vertical seam I mean there's just so many ways in coaches offense that I'm just excited for Andre and, and we're going to keep adding to that position see this show is also just an excuse to talk ball it's I know it's always get we always get back to the yeah, ball that's, that's what we love it's just so fun to be able to talk football all right let's let's go through this list here yep. there yep. are nine other Cougs yep. you mentioned there are five Washingtonians on the list a couple of them were high school teammates at Squalicum and another played with Armani Marsh yes at G Prep Let's start there. How about that? From City College of San Francisco, uh, Sam Lockett the third. Well, let's start here. When okay, Armani yeah. Marsh yeah. comes into my office and yeah. says, Coach, I vouch for this guy and his work ethic and who he is and how he's going to be with us, you listen. Yeah. And, you know, so there's one thing about Sam the player, but it's another about Sam the person. And, you know, I just talked to him this morning as I was, you know, showing him the stadium and everything. He's like, Coach, I've sat in that stadium four or five times. It's truly going to be an honor to play there. Mm-hmm. And those are the type of people that we want here and – you know, we got a need at safety, and he's going to come in and make an impact right away. That's the thought when you see yep. a redshirt junior in City College of San Francisco. Yep. There, are, you know, Derek Langford, uh, Shalom Lawani. Yes. I mean, yes. there have been some phenomenal city, co- recent City College yep. kids to, to come over here. Yeah, the and I just think there's, you know, we're comfortable with their program and how they're coached yeah. and how they're taught. It's actually a very similar defense. You know, right? so it's fun to see. You know, him do a lot of the things we're going to ask him to do, but and then obviously the Spokane connection and Gonzaga prep and being able to come down here and let his family play, it was just so important to him. It's fun to also after what Armani did in the Apple Cup. And Correct. He's probably one of the most under-discussed uh, secondary members in the pack. I, I mean, would agree, in the whole league. Yeah. In the whole league. turned out to be just such a great story as a, a former walk-on. I mean, he's a great kid, you know. <laughs> And it was, you know, one hundred percent agree. Yeah. And it's amazing with uh, you know Javinsky and Layton. You know, so we had Javinsky committed in the summer, and he's going to be a heck of a back. He's Both. physically really ready. And then Layton didn't move in, uh, you know, till this senior year. Okay. So as we started to go throughout the season, his head coach called us and was like, "I know you guys love Ben, but I got another one." Interesting. And uh, you know, Layton is an athlete. He actually grew up loving the Cougs, so this is like a dream realized today. And we're going to use him as an athlete on the defensive side. So, you know, he wants to hit a 10, 500 meter this uh, spring. So fast. he's fast. He's athletic. You know, he was a quarterback. I've had a lot of success just transitioning quarterbacks from the high school to, you know, playing college and defense because they see the game. They love the game. And he's going to be a special one. So Juvenski, Schlenbaker, six foot two twenty. Both of those guys played at Bellingham yep. and, and Squalicum. So uh, six foot two twenty. Juvenski, Ben. Yes, Ben. Uh, is, ben yep. Okay, Ben Schlenbaker. And then Leighton Smithson, 6'1", 180-pound, listed as a safety. Sounds like he might bounce around a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's where we're going to start him. You know, I think he can be that free safety, that guy with great range and great tackling ability. And just, you know, he's a physical runner. You know, so that's one of the things that we look at on who can transition from an offensive player to defense is just how physical and aggressive they run the ball. And I always say high school coaches are smart. Give your best players the ball. Sure, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what they're going to be. And uh, you know, Layton's excited about making that transition. So, also from Washington here is um, uh, Hudson Cedarland. Yeah, uh, six four two twenty from Gig Harbor. Yeah, and we call him Huddy. You know, <laughs> Huddy, that's kind of his Huddy nickname. Cedarland. So you'll get to get All to right. know Huddy, but. Just big, long, athletic, exactly what we want our mics to be, and a guy that can play sideline to sideline and make plays. And I always love two-way players, especially in high school. So at Gig Harbor, he was also a guy that would play an H-back and split out and score a lot of touchdowns at wide receiver, but a great person, a great leader. And he's going to be a mid-year as well, so he's going to come in and really get that jump start and replace these two linebackers that have played a lot of games. Yeah, so, there's a lot of big shoes to fill there. Yeah, we were just excited about him and, and just this whole process. You know, same thing. He was committed to us in the summer. He's been down to four or five games. Like, he is Cougs through and through. And at Gig Harbor, there's like a small pocket of just Cougs that are right there in town that love it. So he's just been impressive to get to know. Great family. 
and just excited to have him. Lakewood, Washington, Jacobus Seth, yeah. 6'4", 280, big boy out of high yeah. school. Yeah, you know one of those guys where, like, both offense and defense are fighting over him? Yeah, because you know, he's like, listed oh, as both. Yeah, yeah. we're going to play O line, D-line, um, but we're going to play him on the offensive line okay. and just that interior physical presence with that size, and he is ready-made. And what I love about Jacobus, he has already texted me today and said, Coach, can you send me over a workout plan? Like, I'm like, I was like, Jacobus, let's enjoy this day. Let's go out to eat with the family. But uh, just that type of mindset, he just loves ball, and he just loves the process. When I see this list, and I want to make sure to not overlook the other guys who are, who are from out of state, and, and they matter just as much. Yes, absolutely. But – Cougs love in-state yeah. stories, and, and why not? You know, you come home and you come here to the Palouse, stay home. How conscious are you in the process of attacking the state of Washington for some of these spots? How intentional is that? It was important for us, and it'll be even more important going forward. I mean, we're going to turn over every stone in this state to make sure that we're getting our eyes on everybody possible. And, you know, this January will be the first time, you know, we really get to start a full recruiting process of seeing guys in person. And that's an important part of what we do and finding the right fits. So regardless of stars and all that other stuff, let's find guys, find guys that fit our program and, you know, are really good players, and that's what we did in the state of Washington today. Do you, do you care about stars? Does that mean any the star ratings? It, it doesn't. Stuff? It doesn't. I think you can get lost in that stuff. I mean, obviously, we're going to find good players, but it's all about the fit and being the right player for us because I've – I've recruited a lot of just one-star, no-star guys that are playing in the league right now. So right? let's find the right fit for our place. All right, so Tariq Al-Ukta, Tariq Al-Ukta I apologize. Tariq Al-Ukta, 6'218 pound freshman from South Central yeah. L.A. 17th ranked linebacker, I believe, in America. Yes. So you're talking about a very highly recruited linebacker. When I think of linebackers from Los Angeles, I think of Jeremiah Allison yep. recently, yep. a really accomplished kook. So this is a guy on on paper at least who we're re- very very excited to talk about and i don't know if i'm gonna embarrass him but we call him buddha okay and that's, okay and buddha. That, that's what buddha right. goes by right. so uh but he is just explosive he is physical he is aggressive and he just has that mindset that you love in a linebacker you know and uh play a little tailback too at the end of the year but you can just see him flashing and going making a lot of big plays for his school yeah that's i mean Buddha, Buddha Alukta. Buddha, I love it. I love it. Uh, we talked about Andre Dollar. Bryce Graves is from Richmond, Texas. I don't know where Richmond is. I don't know my Texas geography. Houston, super. He's Houston. from Houston. Okay. And, and the biggest thing with Bryce and even uh, Javen out of uh, Florida, that yeah. we got a chance to see him in camp. You okay. know, so camps open back up for the first time this summer. You know, so we got a chance to see those guys at multiple camps, right? And as coaches, the biggest thing we can do is check off what we see in person. Every once in a while, a little film can lie to you, mm. you know, so it's great to watch these guys really grow, develop. You get to see their personality a little bit, and you also get to see what happens maybe if they get beat, how they respond. Mm. And, uh, you know, so those guys both checked out uh, at camps. There's got to be a huge difference to, and I don't know what kind of contact you have with them at the camps, but to some degree you can look them in the eye. Yes. You can see how they are when it's not just a highlight. Exactly, exactly what it is. And, you know, you can go there and we're coaching them, you know, so I think that's an important piece of it, how they accept your coaching, get to know you, your oh, personality. So you're really working with them. Yeah, so oh, we're, really, oh, yeah okay. we go down there, I we see. work the camps. Um, got it, got it, you I know, see. So, and the best part is we get to go down there, right? So we were in Florida, we were in Texas, and, you know, had an opportunity to see these guys, and that was the start of, of both of their uh, recruiting processes, and we just feel great about what we're getting here just as far as players and people. Well, different positions, but recently you think of Donovan Ali, you, you yes. a phenomenal Apple Cup, you think of Travell Harris Correct. Right, from Florida. Correct. So some really, really good players. Yeah, and, when we go out of region, I think the biggest focus is, is we want the right fit, you know, and, you know, to find the guys that are going to fit to our place and really want to have impact. And I think that's what these guys can do early in their career. We haven't talked since the Apple Cup. So we should we have to at least for a moment I mean, yeah. touch on a very feels special... like forever ago for me. Yeah, uh, Matt, well, it's been a yes. little while. Yes, it's been a little while, but but boy, what a game! I mean, it, you know how how did that? When did you get a sense? I mean, it must have been pretty quick. Like, hey, this is working out. Well, I would say this. I can't, and I'm a nervous guy in every game. I'm a pacer, but I went into that game with such belief. I looked in our guys' eyes, and it was just there was no way we were losing that game. And I think. There was a belief in themselves. There was a belief in the plan in each other. And even going into the halftime, you know, we had 250 yards. They had 50, but it was a one-score game. 
and we just went in there and said, guys, let's do this. And that was a heck of a second half and even a better fourth quarter. And just what a finish. Yeah. What a finish. The uh, the road field rush. It's it, happened it, before, but it's yeah. not come. I went to shake hands with Coach, and then I was just, I'm out of here <laughs> before go. I get trampled. I'm going to get to the sideline. Yeah, a couple guys, you can't get out of the middle of that. No, yeah. no. And I think it was funny because, you know, we're at 45 minutes in, and we're like, let's get the guys off the field. Right. we got to go eventually. We've got to do this right. thing as a right. team. Plane's so got to take off. It was fun. It was fun. No doubt. All right. Uh, Real quick, and we'll get more into these guys, but the, the last couple names that we haven't mentioned, we, we, Sam Lockett III, we said Bryce Gray, 6'1", 200-pounder mm-hmm. from Richmond, and then uh, Javen Robinson is the final. He's a corner, 5'11", corner. 175-pounder from Apopka, Florida. Yeah, uh, played for Wes Orange, and you know, just another one. Like I said, we saw him in camp, but his explosiveness, his range, his speed, his quickness, you know, just a guy that I think can come in and contribute actually pretty early in his career, and He's just one of those football guys, and I think all 10 of these guys, that's what we love. They love the game, you know, and it's not just about the recruiting, the graphics, the videos, because guys can get lost in that a little bit. They love the process, and more importantly, they love it here in Pullman. Eric Wilder, 6'5", 280-pound freshman from Syracuse, Utah. Is that a Salt Lake City area? Guy? Yes, right okay. on Salt Lake okay. City. And Wilder is probably the biggest personality out right? of all these guys. Is that right? And, and I, I gave him credit this morning for his leadership. I mean, he was the glue, you know, because these guys all have a group chat that they're in, and he's keeps it light, keeps it fun. But when it comes to football, you know, he's going to be a monster at, at tackle in the Pac-12 and just excited for his growth and development. But I give Eric a lot of credit for his leadership and – just yeah, everyone you talk to says, oh, man, I can't wait to meet him in person. I love that. I, likewise. Likewise. All right, we'll take a break. Can't keep you for one more second. You bet. All right, you we'll, bet. We'll keep Coach here. We're live with Coach Dicker. We're in the Steve Gleason recruit suite as we're talking about 10 new Cougs and some other ball topics here. Awesome. As we're, we're getting awesome. separate for the Sun Bowl. We'll take a break. Come back. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog, because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. At Northern Quest, the game's not over when the clock runs out. You can play longer than anywhere else in town with the most slot titles and more payouts. Not to mention the lowest bets, the highest limits, and the most live table games around. Plus, with our all-new Turf Club Sportsbook, you can do way more than just watch your favorite teams. So come on out and make every day game day, only at Northern Quest. Cougar football lives here. Got the middle touchdown! One second left! On the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Time to bring the claws back on. That's call. Pick six in the Apple Cup. Superman's in touchdown. Jaden Delora on the dive. Jake Dickert and the Cougs close out the season on New Year's Eve in the Sun Bowl against Miami. Far side picked off. George Hicks. Max Borgie reaches for the lead. Free game coverage starts at 7 a.m. with kickoff at 9 on your home for Cougar football. The Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. If a buried natural gas pipeline is leaking outside your home, you may see dead vegetation, hear a hissing noise, or smell it. Because a Vista adds a rotten egg scent that's easily detectable. If so, get far away and call 911 and a Vista. And if you ever smell a natural gas leak indoors, get everyone outside fast. Don't flip light switches, use a cell phone, or do anything to cause a spark. Go somewhere safe, like a neighbor's house. Then call 911 and a Vista. We just want you to be safe. The Cougar Signing Day Special. You got Joey Hobart. Mm-hmm. You watch the film of Joey Hobart. It's it's fun. You can see a kid that loves football. This is Hobart on the run with the grab. 35-yard line. Could break it. 20. Blocking is there at the 10. Joey Hobart's gone. He competes. Every time he catches the ball, it's like, where's the end zone? I'm going to go find it. Joey Hobart, touchdown. Here's Matt Chazanow. 
back here live. We're in the Steve Gleason Recruits Week here in the Cougar Football Complex with the head man himself, Jake Dicker, kind enough to join us here on this very busy signing day. It's, busy. A, it's thankfully a celebration yes. uh, at this point. Yes. Uh, ten new Cougs are in. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest. More slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Plus... The Turf Club Sportsbook is now open. Changes the dynamic in Northern Quest. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. No comment from you, Coach. No, no one. comment. No. We're going to skip that one Stay from you. Stay above that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to skip that one from you, but uh, that's fun for folks there in Spokane. We talked about the 10 recruits. Um, you've gone two linebackers, tight end, yes. which is fun. Yes. Uh, three safeties, although one may be kind of an athlete sure. hybrid in fairness, a corner, a running back, and two offensive linemen. The other question folks are going to have is the class will have more kids than this. Yes. How does that happen, and where do those kids come from? Well, I think it's now a process of just seeing who signed. Right, We're already working on that right now because okay. if you sign pretty much, you've, you've done it at 7 a.m. this morning. So it will be a process of finding those guys, and you know, you got to spread your net even maybe a little bit outside of our region to see what could be a possible fit for us. And then always looking to just add pieces, whether it's uh, junior college players or a couple – you know, transfer portal guys that can fit our needs, our place, and be the right people. So it's still going to be a busy uh, holiday. Uh, we're excited about today, and we're going to celebrate today. And then, you know, as we keep forward, there's some needs that we still have to hit. In that, I would imagine two new coordinators are, mm-hmm. are going to have some input and some discussion with you, right? Eric Morris is the offensive coordinator who was here on the Palouse in 2012, yes. and yes. now he's back. And, yes. and then Brian Ward, who comes over from Nevada, is the defensive coordinator here now. And, and I would imagine those two gentlemen have, have some important insight into that process. Absolutely. And, and Coach Ward, I've, I've been working with Coach Ward since I was graduate assistant at North Dakota State, and he kind of shaped me a lot. And just kind of staying connected through this, I know there was one guy that I entrusted to make sure he's going to carry this on. And the best part is we're just so aligned on what we see, what we need, and really how we want to go about attacking it, you know, and it starts up front, you know, so we're still looking to add some pieces up front and then, you know, obviously being very multiple in the back end. So a smooth transition as far as scheme and terminology and all those things and just really sharing a vision for the guys that we need. And then on offense, you know, Coach Morris just really zoning in on what fits his scheme and how we do it. We got a bunch of explosive wide receivers still on the roster that he's more than excited to work with and Wells uh, Jaden. And then just finding the offensive line pieces. You know, we got to find some guys that can protect. And, you know, losing the two running backs, we want to make sure we reload at that position. So just throughout the process, Coach Morris, just his energy, his passion, his vision, and just what he could bring, I think, was just a great fit. And, you know, being here for a year is important. You know, so he understands what it's like to be here in Pullman, but also recruit to Pullman, Washington, and, and why that's special and unique. So you have yourself an, a schedule here with the Sun Bowl coming up toward New Year's. Mm-hmm. You, you're recruiting here now. You've got these 10 new Cougs here. What's next? So what happens now? These, these guys are here. They're signed. And then you do what to get prepped for the bowl game? You know, so we've been doing a lot of just, you know, good on good or, or just, you know, O versus D practices here, you know, spreading them out over the last couple of weeks. And we're really attacking finals, right, and want to make sure we're finishing that this week and have a Saturday practice. And we'll get about three bowl prep uh, practices in next week before we take a little break for Christmas. Okay. And then we get four practices down at the bowl site. So that's like a normal preparation week as we go, like our normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So. We're excited to play down in El Paso. I mean, the people have been unbelievable. And I just heard great things about the Sun Bowl from, you know, guys that have been down there in 2015. And, you know, it's just about the people and the experience, and we're excited to play. No, the hospitality of the Sun Bowl is bar none. Yep. And, and, and I can personally vouch Good. for that. Yeah, no, they're great. They're, it's a, in that regard, it is – it's as good a bowl game as there is in America. Now, there is one in Pasadena I've yet to go to. We can talk more about we that can, we'll talk later. More so about I, that. I can't vouch for that okay. one, and I don't okay. mean to compare ignorantly, but I can say that the, and the Holiday Bowl and Cheesy Bowl, they're great also, but the um, or the, where the Cheesy Bowl is in a new location. Yeah, now. yeah, Whatever. yeah. I know what you're the saying. The Sun Bowl is great. They're great people. Yeah, and to play a, story, you know, a historic program like University of Miami, I mean, I think it's going to be a great game. Tons of athletes, tons of points scored. I mean, that that's what they're, they're known for. So yeah. it'll be 
a great challenge. We're excited about it. I remember the 2015 prep for it. First of all, I didn't expect snow. I was going to say, yeah. everyone talks about that. It was beautiful the working blizzard. up to it, and then all of a sudden, like a snow globe happened. For a real blizzard, not yeah. like a little yeah. blizzard. Like, it shut down the city for three days after, yeah. and they couldn't get out, and that's obvious. It's the Sun Bowl. I know. It's the Sun Bowl. I know. So, I've... it was, I mean, I thought it was great. You know, yeah. you're in there, and Mike Price was there because he was on. He was yeah. at UTEP in the, up, the Sun Bowl committee. Well, it's great when you're playing Miami and it snows. Yeah, like, we got great. a little bit of an advantage. It like, was we'll, great. we'll take that a little you bit. You can't make it up. You, you can't. can't make it up. So, it was a great game. But Miami always, and, and as, you, as we get prepped for it, you know, I can tell you right now, every one of their kids, big recruits, yeah. like all of them. Yeah. You know, the, you go, yeah. I'm going down the list going, my goodness, you know, this is. I agree. You, you look at the roster and they are, are really young. Mm. You know, that's probably the exciting part about their future. But, you know, most of their players from, you know, the freshman quarterback, they have three freshman wide receivers, freshman tailback. I mean, QB is really good. He can sling it. And he is a, a big, tall dude that can stand in there and throw the ball. So it'll be a great challenge. But one of our guys, I know once we clear this finals week and we really get into the prep, you know, they're going to be really excited to go down there and play. And who's their head coach Not that, for this bowl game? Not anybody we've known from this year, I don't think. No. Like, no, okay. no, no, right. no, nobody. No, nobody that right. no. It's not a rematch. Of no, no rematch. Right. No rematch. All right. Got, I, I yes. had to ask. Had to yes. ask. All right, Coach, thank you for this time. This is really exciting. I, you and I were, were speaking off air about about these guys. And, you know, on paper, some it, they, they, it yeah. really pops. I mean, it's really, really exciting. you got five in-state kids. you got five from out of the region who yep. seem not only to fit really well, but hi, really highly recruited kids. Yes. These are very, very highly regarded football players. You know, and I, and I want to thank Joshua Murrah, yeah. you know, our, our, high, to talk to our high school bit. recruiting coordinator. But there's just been a lot of work that gets behind the scenes all for this morning and this day that, you know, I – it, take, it takes everybody, you know, from our university to our AD to our president to all the academic staff that comes help us recruit these guys. It's it's a very special day, and and we're excited about this group. Yeah, I'm excited for that conversation in that regard. And I'm going to cut yep. you loose here because I know yep. you're busy. But, Josh, there's a whole other world. Oh, and we whole, can't really talk about it it's a while whole it's going world. on. So we can get a little peek behind the curtain. Yes. There's, you're not just there coaching on game day, you, like you said, these kids oh, have been here three games, visits, four games. There's Zooms. I mean, the, right. the work that these guys put in is just un- yeah. unbelievable. So excited to, you know, to kind of shed light yeah. on the process a little bit. Thank you, Coach. Oh, Congratulations. Always. Always. Thank you very much. That's Coach Dickard here live in the recruit suite. We'll take a break. We'll get Joshua Murrah, the head of uh, recruit. I want to get his title correct. It's the head of high school recruiting yes, coordinator yes. here for, for Cougar football as we're live here from the Cougar football complex. Which would you rather be, an armchair quarterback or an on-the-edge-of-your-cushy-leather-seat-chair quarterback. Turf Club Sportsbook is now open at Northern Quest. With the most modern, luxurious, and exciting sports wagering experience around. So you can bet, watch, and win like never before. Right here in the heart of the action. Turf Club Sportsbook, the ultimate game changer. Now open at Northern Quest. There's a new satisfying stop on the road. Nom Nom has your snack. It's the Think With Your Belly destination, where tasty treats, refreshing drinks, and quality fuel always come first. Nom Nom, life in the snack lane. Enjoy your casual Friday every day at Nom Nom. Delivered fresh daily to participating Nom Nom convenience stores, fabulous fritters, glorious glazed rings, magnificent maple bars, and more. Nom Nom, life in the snack lane. This is the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. This Washington State University sports broadcast is brought to you in part by Pullman Regional Hospital, the official hospital of Washington State Athletics. The combined expertise of our university and our award-winning hospital is being deployed to provide greater access to resources, education, employment opportunities, and innovations to improve health care and health outcomes for all of us. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State, partners in excellence. It's a new season. Get ready for more men's and women's college sports excellence. Trophies will be awarded in June to schools who take the top spot in the 2021-22 Learfield Directors' Cup. The premier award recognizes one winning institution in all competitive divisions. Follow your favorite team's progress as seasonal standings are announced at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at directorscup.org. The crowning achievement in college athletics. Signing day. 
Holiday Special. Justice Rogers, six foot two, 220 pound freshman. Throws an interception. Justice Rogers with blocking at the 30. Makes a cut 40. Justice Rogers to the races. His speed, athleticism, and he's going to be a big guy. We can do something with him the next four years and really have something in there. The Bellevue kid with an Apple Cup pick. Justice Rogers. Justice is Seattle served. Here's Matt Chazanow. Back at it live here, we're talking about our new signing class. We've got 10 new Kooks here today. We're here with A.J. Cooper, defensive line coach here for the Kooks. Thanks for doing this. I know you guys are working phones today, and, yep. and it's a busy day, but also a lot have come in already. Yes. And that's a, that's an exciting uh, prospect here. Javen Robinson is one that you were recruiting personally yep. in the floor. At Popka floor. Where's the Popka? Uh, so it's uh, on the west side of yeah. Orlando. Okay. All yep. right. So the Orlando area, 5'11", 175-pounder. Yep. What kind of player is he? He's explosive. He, he was a kid that we identified coming out of summer camps. You know, we saw him at a different, couple different camps down in the south this year. And he was a really explosive kid, really competitive kid. Uh, got to know his family really well. And just the type of young man that we felt like was really going to fit not only what we need on the field, but fit the type of culture that we're continuing to build here on defense. And, and he showed it his senior year, too. We kind of got on early, got on him early and really liked what we saw at camp and had a really good senior season. I believe his team went to, I think it was the semifinals in the state of Florida and, and was a part of a, a really special run at that high school. So Top 100 corner in the country is mm. by one of the rating services, so really highly regarded player. He, he can run. He can run. I mean, he, he's a kid that, you know, I think probably from a body type standpoint would probably remind people of Shaw Smith Wade. Okay. Um, but, you know, we had him clocked. We had we had watches on him. We had him clocked at a 4-4. Wow. I mean, kid could really run. And really, again, the type of kid that when you got to know him and you saw how competitive he was, but he was really coachable at the camps at the same time, just the more more we got to know him, the more we communicated with him. And then when he came on his visit, the players really enjoyed and engaged with him. This type of guy, like, okay, this guy's going to fit here as well. Not just a good player, but a kid that's going to want to be here. Feels like a really huge victory for what, this is the point of the camps, right? I mean, oh, 100%. part of it's just being stewards of the game yep. to some degree. You're, you're yep. going out to places, you got the Coug logo yep. on, no so doubt. you're back no school and you're repping the school and you're trying to do good by the sport mm -hmm. and you're trying to bring kids in, coach. I'm sure not every kid there is going to be a, a D1 player. Maybe, yep. maybe, they, maybe they are, I, I shouldn't say. But mm -hmm. in this instance, not only did you go there with this purpose, but it worked. 100%. You know, and, and guys, you got to give guys like Travell Harris and, and obviously Dion and, and CJ and guys like that that have laid the uh, found work, foundation for having success from that far away. Because you're looking for a certain type of kid, obviously with ability, but the type of kid that can tr transition here, and obviously Gavin Barthiel here being now as well. So, yeah, it was a, it was a combination of a lot of those things. You know what I mean? And yeah, Gavin's a good looking player. He is. Yeah, yeah folks Gavin's, don't know Gavin. You're gonna see Gavin, I think, in here in another year. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's he's had a good off season and really a kid that's shown up, especially in some of the scrimmages we had. Like you hear and feel him. So that that's the future. But we're excited about him. Yeah, there's a lot of practice that is about getting better for that purpose right yep. and i'm lucky enough to have some of the some of the access to that so yep. but in a game you know gavin wasn't in the apple cup so we weren't we weren't talking Correct. about it. but th there are a lot of gavins on this team they're a bunch oh, of kids there, there's some young guys i could tell you like at the edge position there's a couple young kids that you, you guys are going to see here pretty quickly that some interior guys too yeah right? they're, they're coming along so yeah. now that's what this off season that's the great part about all the bowl prep and all the time we get right now is yes we're preparing for miami who's a very good opponent and that you know has got our focus focus 100% don't get that wrong but there's also elements of practice where you're able to just focus on those young kids and get them repetition and get them drill work and watch those guys improve and it's it's extra lifting with coach Bradshaw right now all that like these three weeks is extra time it's an extended spring ball or fall camp however you want to look at it and that's really big time for these young players to well develop. And, and also it's the, I apologize I didn't mean to cut you no, off but you've got basically six straight bowls mm -hmm. right so if you do it once it is great and mm -hmm. an accomplishment and a program milestone. But by the time you've done it a sixth time in a row, well, there's a player on the team who has a cumulative effect of basically 100%. every year now he has another month and a half, yep. depending on the bowl, you know, four to six weeks basically of being in football still. 100%. And not being home. So after a while, that, there, that adds it's got to add up. It does. I, and I've been a part of that at two other programs, and you see the same thing is just that added development, that time on the field, the time in the weight room, the time eating, the time in a meeting room. Like after a while, that, that – starts to elevate your guys and that whatever age group they're in amongst their peers that they're competing against yeah it feels like uh it feels like now i mean now it's bowl 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 bowl, bowl. it's not it's not if it's it's which one and no no jockeying for position which is 
it's fun. It's fun in some way to take. It's fun to take things for granted. You know, I mean, it, 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 it kind becomes, of becomes it becomes a standard. It's what you expect. Exactly. Right. That's right. a better way. And, to and we got to continue that standard, and everybody understands that. And then obviously, you got to continue to raise it from there. But. How much do you know Brian Ward? How well do you know Coach Ward? So we worked together, what was that, going back? i got to count the years now. I guess it would be 11, 12 years ago. Okay. So we were on the same staff together in 2010 at North Dakota State. Okay. And we're both from Arizona, so we had known a lot of the same people. Matter of fact, he had been the defensive coordinator at the junior college I played at two years prior to me getting there. Huh. So we knew a lot of the same people were from, I wouldn't say the same part of the Valley, but pretty close. You know what I mean? His high school was, you know, not quite as good as my high school. I remind him <laughs> of that all the time. No, but uh, so known him really well. Probably one of my better friends in, in the coaching community since we worked together 11 years ago. Now. Oh, it's fun. So it's pretty yeah. tight knit. You, 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 yes. you knew, you immediately know what you're getting into. Hunter, I, I can't tell you how many conversations over the last decade him and I have about football, about life, about like there was no, yeah, this, we do this. I mean, last week, whatever it's been, has been every time we're watching film it's like a coaching clinic because yeah. we're going okay this is the way we do it this way we do it okay we like this like it's it's like i explain it to people it's like we speak the same language just a slightly different dialect yeah you know what i mean yeah. and, th- and that's how you can grow and get better because it's not trying to reteach something to someone brand new it's hey okay we can tweak this to this and this is why and we understand the principles behind it it's it's been really fun. It's interesting to hear how there's change, but there's such continuity within that. I mean, these yep. are very tactful. There's, there are a lot of reasons why Coach Ward and, and Coach Morris, for yep. instance, are here. Well, same thing with Coach Calgus. I worked with we worked with Coach Calgus. I worked with him for six years. Coach Dickard worked with him for I think three or four. Mm-hmm. Like that's same thing. He stepped in and goes, "Okay, you're doing this like this, this like this. Yep, right. boom, 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 got and, it, and we go." Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited for the Sun Bowl, and I, I this I, I don't know how much you were on. You were personally in with Javen. You were running the camp. How much have you gleaned about the other rest of the nine guys? Just you know, I got a chance to see Buddha play live early okay. in the year, and that was really exciting. You know, he, I won't. I'm really excited about Buddha. He reminds me of a kid on our roster right now uh-huh. um, out of high school who's a really explosive player. That's okay. a really good player for the Cougs. Okay. I'll let people kind of guess. All right. that. I'm not right. going to set Buddha up for that, but All right. um, he was really, really explosive. I saw them play, uh, I think it was their second-round playoff game, and, okay. and Buddha, you could tell there was probably 10 or 15 Division One players on the field, and Buddha stuck out. You could see his explosiveness, his playmaking ability, his leadership. Like, you felt him. You want to feel linebackers when you, when you watch them, and you felt him. You know Big I mean? recruit, 17th best linebacker in America yeah. by, by one service. He, he can go and he can strike and he's got instincts and he's a kid that, just like a lot of these kids, we're really excited because through all the ups and downs of this year, these kids stayed committed, they stayed loyal. You know, it was important for them to be a Cougs, you know what I mean? And when we were able to get back out in their homes, they were really, really solid. They had a solid foundation. And, like, for people to understand in context, context coaches, that's how you build greatness upon that. Hmm. Because these kids wanted to be here. You could have given these kids every reason in the world to go somewhere else, and they decided to stay committed to that. And that's that means a lot, especially when you're talking about Washington State and Pullman. Kind of reinforces they wanted it even more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank absolutely. you, Coach. Thanks for absolutely. this time. Appreciate AJ it. Cooper, absolutely. Thank you, defensive line coach. We're going to talk to Josh O'Mura. Guy who kind of architects this whole thing, yep, right? Yep. Puts the whole thing together, puts the building there. You exactly guys, you right. Guys going, so <laughs> yeah, we go do it. No yeah, doubt. yeah, I love it. We'll talk to him. We'll take a break. We're live here in the Steve Gleason Recruit Suite as we talk ball here on Signing Day. Go Cougs! Nothing works up an appetite like cheering for your Cougs on game day. So why not cheer them on at Northern Quest with an impressive roster of restaurants and lounges? You can tackle the menu at Epic and catch every play on the ten by thirty foot screen. Or grab a steak at Maslow's, a fine cigar at Legends of Fire, even a burger from Fat Burger. You know, for your inner linebacker. See more at northernquest.com. Go Cougs! If you use natural gas, you recognize its blue flame. But natural gas is actually invisible and odorless. That's why Avista adds a rotten egg scent in case there's ever a leak. If you smell natural gas at home, get outside fast. Don't flip switches or do anything to cause a spark. Go somewhere safe. Call 911. Then Avista. We'll take care of the problem and tell you when it's okay to return. Till then, it's a good excuse to visit the neighbors. Avista. We just want you to be safe. You're listening to Cougar Football on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. This is Cougar.
Cougar basketball. Lowry's step back three, top of the yard, got it! Hand in his face! Yeah, Turn around, stop! Join us all season as Kyle Smith and the Cougs look to make some noise in the Pac-12 and beyond. Roberts with an answer, got it! Left side Whoa. for the lead, a three, got oh. it! T.J. Bama hits it! It's only on your home for Cougar basketball, the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. The Cougars Signing Day Special, presented by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. The quarterback, Jane DeLoria, off the island from Hawaii, from St. Louis High School. DeLoria with a keeper, curls left, one hand down to the turf, Superman's in, touchdown! He jumps off the page and he throws a really, really tight spiral. The ball just comes off his hand. Got back to Laura. He's under pressure now, lets it fly, center of the end zone. This is a touchdown! Here's the voice of the Cougars, Matt Chazanow. Live here in the recruit suite. And that's appropriate because it's signing day here. And we've got Joshua Murr, Director of Recruiting, here for the Cougs. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest. More slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Plus, the Turf Club Sportsbooks now open. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. All right, I'm really excited to talk to you, sir. Joshua Mora here, Director of Recruiting. And we don't get a chance to talk on the record. Nah. So th- this is this is our moment. This is our chance to really break things down. We've got 10 new Cougs. Yes, sir. You're the Director of Recruiting. How excited are you about these 10 guys? And I want to go through all 10 because I know you know these guys. I mean, uh, we're absolutely juiced about these guys. I mean, these are the guys that we wanted. These are the guys that we picked. Um, all over the map. I mean, Washington kids, Florida kids, Texas. I mean, really coming together to really build, you know, what this class is going to be and what Coach Dickert's vision is going to be here at, at WSU. You're tugging on a lot of heartstrings here for Cougs. There's a pattern here, okay? So not only are there five Washingtonians, right, which mm-hmm. is always fun. You get five accomplished in-state kids. But Coug fans immediately recognize that Los Angeles area or, or you know, Southern California, mm-hmm. it's a little bit of Texas, a little bit of Florida, plus Washington, this has been a recipe for – great success here of late a lot of bowl game success coming from players from these regions right right so i mean just as we kind of got into it i mean there's just so many people that put in so many hours to help build this class and help build this thing i mean in our recruiting department alone you have justin mesa sammy parker marco regalado my man alex um our creative team is absolutely the best in the country in my opinion my man bryce back there taking the photos bailey white tim hepler those guys are just absolute studs in their in their field so when it came to putting this class together i mean it was a comprehensive project it was a really kind of a holistic approach from coach dickert and our staff and really just to highlight the hours the time the comprehensive evaluations it's just it really came together to help put this into what it is what happens on a visit can you take us behind the curtain you fly somebody in and and then what you know it's an official visit what's what's the day like what's the weekend like i mean it's it's just trying to get out of the way of what everything that the Palouse and what WCU has to offer here. I mean, we always talk about, you know, in at this level of Power 5 schools, I mean, there's, you know, every school's going to have stuff. We like to think that it's the people that fill those buildings and fill that stuff and work with that stuff that makes the difference, and that's what makes WCU special. Um, you know, I, I talked about our creative team, but all the people that, you know, make up this building, you know, Dwayne Bradshaw and his crew down in strength, Miss Lindsay and the performance nutrition team, I mean, James Spooner and the athletic training staff, you really can't find a better staff in the country. The level of care that they put in our boys and the level of care that they show our recruits when they come on campus, I mean, you get out of their way and let them do their thing, really. So you sort of bring them in, right? Let's say they fly in on like a Friday, mm-hmm. you, know, maybe, you know, flying on a Friday uh, and tour. Right, you tour. tour and meet, and yep. then maybe go to a game. Maybe go to a game. Um, we did a lot of game day visits. Uh, we like to try to get them out to all of our Cougar sports. I mean, really kind of show them what the student athlete life is like. Life is like here. Um, got hit all the 
Pullman Classics, got to take them to Ferdinand's, yes. get the ice cream. Yes. I mean, I like to think that that is the trump card. <laughs> Sells it sounds the sealer. It's the deal sealer. I mean, it, it would be for me. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. So the conversation with, uh, you know, someone from Bellingham, Lakewood, or Gig Harbor is different than someone from Syracuse, Utah. Right? Absolutely. It, you, you're shedding a, a different light. And also there probably is a discussion about – position and playing time and, and coaching and all those things that's got to all go into it right? absolutely i mean there's so many factors that go into like what makes a guy an ideal recruit for wsu and you know this is a place that you really got to want to be and you know the vision is really everything that's going to help shape it into what it is so you know finding washingtonians that want to do it for washington that was one of the first things that really came to mind in putting this class together and you know me coming from honolulu hawaii you know, hometown pride, a lot of Hawaiian pride is kind of big in our culture out on the island. And so to bring kind of those thoughts of doing it for your hometown, doing it for your home state, those are all really, really big proponents that's going to really help us really build the foundation of this team and get that locker room to, you know, understanding who they're playing for, the communities they're playing for, all the way from the west side, all the way out this way, and everything in between. So it's a, uh, it's really awesome to see, you know, the, the pride, the passion that these Washingtonian kids have really brought to our recruitment and what they're going to do in this program. But how do you determine which Washingtonian or, or which player, which high school player, you know, how much are you talking to coaches about saying, hey, all right, this is a target, right, and and then why, right, and, you know, and, and is it just the type of player that they are? You know, I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that, but I guess my question really is how do you know who to focus your efforts on? Well, I mean, the high school coaches are the absolute, you know, biggest piece in this whole puzzle mm-hmm. in, in working with the Washingtonian kids. I mean, we wanted to do the best by the Washington coaches that we could, um, and, you know, hearing them out, making sure that they're heard, letting them get their players looked at, making sure that we looked at as many Washingtonian kids as possible and maintaining, you know, a really solid database of names, positions, all these guys. And really just the amount of time and the job that these Washington coaches do, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, the passion that they have for their kids, the passion for the program, more straight shooters than, than a lot of other places that I've that right? you know, really worked with. And, I mean, these guys have been just absolute studs in making sure that we get the right information, the most accurate information, and are willing to work with us on, you know, any, really on any end. So I went through these ten names with Coach Dickert, mm-hmm. right? And I know that you know them really, really well. Yes, sir. We had A.J. Cooper just talk about uh, uh, Buddha Al-Ukta. As yeah. a, he said he's Buddha. Seems like a really, really talented player. Stud. Absolute stud. I mean – Great family, great program, um, plays for an incredible seven-on-seven seven team. I mean, when you look at the body of work that the kid has put together. And played, just for his film, played for Snoop Dogg. Played for Snoop. I mean, that can't be understated either. He, he, there's that picture of Snoop wearing that Coug shirt. He's probably coming to a game, I would think. He's got to. I mean, won't say no. <laughs> won't say no, Uncle Snoop. I love it. I love it. Seven, number 17 linebacker in, in the country, you know, top 40 player in California. How about Hudson Cedarland? I mean, I'm going through the list here. Gig Harbor kid, so a Washingtonian 6'4", 220 linebacker. I mean, absolute freak. I mean, just the work ethic that that kid puts in on a regular basis. I mean, when we started recruiting him and really started talking to him, one of the things that really stood out was just the amount of time that he spends on himself just really preparing for his craft, preparing as a linebacker in the weight room, skill work. I mean, this is a kid that is, you know, driving oftentimes an hour, an hour and a half just to get to his training facility, hour and an hour and a half back, and then he's got school and all that on top of that, you know. So just an uncommon work ethic and a guy that we're really excited to bring in. Top 50 linebacker in the country. Not so, too shabby, yeah, huh? that's he, I mean, you're talking and really, you know, you, you, you want to put some stock. There's some credence to that. Right. Mm-hmm. There's star ratings and rankings. You know, he's the number 47 inside linebacker. Well, what does that really mean? Well, it means he's a, it means he's a really, really good ball player. Right. If right. you're 47 or if you're 62 or if you're 20, what it means is you, you're in that conversation. Someone yeah. recognizes your ability at some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it means you're it means you're a really, really highly rated player. It's fun that he's also, of course, the number 11 in state prospect. Got to love it. Yeah. That's a Gotta that's a significant it. deal. Andre Dollar. We, we talked about him with, with Coach Dicker. Really exciting player. Number six tight end prospect in. Uh, America, mm-hmm. uh, six six two hundred thirty pound from Mustang, Oklahoma. I can't say I've ever been to Mustang, Oklahoma. No, nor have I. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oklahoma, I think it's just on the outside of Oklahoma City. Okay. But I mean, for him, his family, just their story, their background, coach's kid. He was just absolutely so impressive on his visit, and I mean, really, I think one of the most outstanding things and one of the most you know noteworthy things about these guys when they're on their visits was just how they connected and interacted with each other. The recruits I'm talking about, oh, the like, class itself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it almost was something that was kind of shaping up, like, right in front of our eyes, like, oh, my gosh, like, these guys are really hitting off. And so, again, like, you let WCU do its thing. You let, 
you let Martin Stadium do its thing on game day, and then you just get out of the way and let it kind of work its magic. Bryce Grays is a safety, right? Mm-hmm. Six foot, hundred ninety pounder from Richmond, Texas. Coach said that's a, the Houston area. Houston area. Uh, very proud of his area. Very proud to represent the state of Texas. A lot of pride coming from that program. A uh, place for Coach Black over there, um, who you know was a guy that Coach Parker, Sammy Parker, knew in our recruiting department. So, any sort of information we needed, I mean, again, it's something that you got to make sure that you're always taking care of those high school coaches, whether it's from Texas, Washington, California, don't matter. We always want to make sure that we're doing right by those guys. We're here with Joshua Murrah, the recruiting coordinator here for the Cougs. Bryce Gray is a top 100 safety in the country by by rating. Now, Sam Lockett, he started out at, at Utah State. He transferred to City College of San Francisco immediately. Cougs fans know City College of San Francisco. There are mm-hmm. a lot of very very very, very successful recent Cougs. But the other key here is he played with Armani Marsh in, in G-Prep. I mean, Gonzaga prep kid, played for Coach McKenna out there. I mean, that's another guy, Coach McKenna, that's just has absolutely been just a stud for us, just kind of giving us information and telling us about kids. So when I was able to, you know, let him know that Sam was getting on board with Armani and that two of his guys were going to be in the same defensive backfield, I mean, to hear the joy in his voice yeah, and bad. the excitement, I mean, it, it won't be surprising to see Coach McKenna at very many Cougs games this year. Love so. that. Love that. Uh, Spokane kids. Javen Robinson from Apopka, Florida. That's the Orlando area. Orlando area. Yeah, that's what I was told. Uh, top 100 corner in the country. So one of those guys on the boundaries there. Mm-hmm. There have been Lately, there have been some really good corners for, for the Cougs, right? Oh, yeah. Derek Langford had a, had a fantastic year. Jalen Watson had a, a really, really good year. And I don't, I don't mean to omit anybody previously or anybody else, but, you know, Javen Robinson, exciting and Florida has been really good to the Cougs lately. No question. I mean, Calvin Jackson, Travell Harris, right. Dion. I mean, the list goes on and on for just recent Cougs. And really, I think it's been awesome to see Javen really kind of connect with uh, the guys that came before him, talking with D-Lang, talking with Jalen Watson, like seeking these guys out on his own on social media. So it's been really cool to see him kind of develop his relationship with those guys and just really understand what the culture is like here him be understanding that he's kind of the next one up and the next one, you know, pursuing his craft and his time here at WCU. So it'll be exciting to see what his four years look like here. Juvenski Schlenbaker is mm-hmm. an in-state uh, Bellingham kid. Bellingham. Six foot two twenty, uh, one of two Squalicum High School players right. coming here to the Palouse. And those guys have such an interesting story in itself. So Leighton, his teammate that's the safety that uh, is in this class as well, um, they actually grew up playing sports together. So they actually have a picture of each other, like, they, I think they were like a triple option team when they're in youth league, you know, from mostly youth league teams. And it's both of them down in like a three point stance, like looking like two linemen. And they cre- recreated that picture on their ah. photo shoot. So it was nice to see just two skill guys down like that. That's fun. So they go back. So Leighton Smithson's a safety, although was was it Leighton or one of the safeties can kind of bounce around a little bit. He's an athlete. Uh, late, yeah, Leighton bounced around a little bit. Yeah. He was in, uh, I think he played at Mountain View in Idaho okay. before transferring back over to uh, Squalicum High School and reunited with uh, Javinsky for his senior year. Got it. So Javinsky is actually the number one, uh, 41 running back in America, mm-hmm. right? So top 50 running back in the country. And then Leighton is a uh, top prospect in the state of Washington, 6'2", 180, and also from Bellingham. So, you know, they're teammates from, they're from Squalicum, so they mm-hmm. come over here to the to the east side. And, and uh, Jacobus Seth is one of, a couple of linemen here in yes, this sir. class, 6'4", 280, another in-state kid, Lakewood High School. Lakewood High School, Arlington area. I mean, Coach Teeter uh, was – absolutely instrumental in this and just getting us information on him um you know he was a guy that our offensive staff really really took to early on and just seeing you know the potential for him to grow and continue to be you know an absolute force on the o-line or d-line we really like him as an offensive lineman so you know it's going to be interesting to see what his four years look like here yeah 56 number 56 rated defensive end in Mm -hmm. the country weak side defensive end in the country and then uh, an offensive lineman now at some point you're going to hear the fight song in your ear that means we got 60 seconds left just so just so it doesn't surprise you eric wilder is the last he's the 10th there is there's a fight song 60 seconds 65 280 from the salt lake city area coach said he's got a big personality huge personality really really awesome family they've been awesome to get to know um he's going to be one that's going to kind of be following the 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 footsteps of liam ryan i feel like um just going to be a great kid a kid that you know a lot of coop fans will take to big warm personality so you see him come give him a high five and give him a hug thank you about it thank you for this time josh congratulations i know this is this is you're behind the scenes guys so this is an exciting day you finally get to talk about your stuff appreciate it huge thanks to jake dickard aj cooper for joining us as well jerry kylo gets us on the air jared pren goober behind the camera luke hallett back in the studio 6 30 airtime tonight beasley coliseum by the way Cougs play new mexico state pretty big game team pick to win their league so that's a big one. that's a big one all right huge thanks and congratulations to all these new Cougs and welcome to the Palouse. welcome to the family go Cougs, go Cougs.
Bill is